Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the Seagate OneTouch SSD. This is a portable solid state drive that connects to your computer with a USB Type-C port. We've looked at these from other brands and now we're going to give Seagate a good look here. But before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Seagate. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this USB hard drive is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at around $75 for the 500 gigabyte version. That's the one that we have here. The one terabyte version from a price perspective is probably the sweet spot as it is with many of these portable SSDs. That one comes in at $135. There are three colors available. We've got the white and gray one here. It's got a nice little texture on the side, a little metal here at the top. It is not waterproof, but it is solid state. So if you drop it, it will likely survive the fall, unlike a mechanical drive that is a lot more delicate. It just has a single USB Type-C port on here to connect to your computer. The computer will power the drive. If you don't have a USB-C equipped computer, you have a cable in the box to accommodate that, which will go from the USB-C on the back here to a standard USB-A. And then they also have a USB-C to USB-C cable. Now, one thing to note about USB speeds is that even though ports might look the same, they perform differently. So what you need to make sure to get the full performance out of this drive is that you're plugging into a Gen 2 port. Typically, your computer will have the port labeled like this. And if you see that 10 on there, that's the port that you're going to want to connect this drive to for the best performance. But it will work with any USB port but some ports just might be slower than others. Now, if your computer doesn't have the little USB label by its ports, you might have to consult with the manual or go to the support page. And then you've got some computers like my MacBook Pro here that have Thunderbolt, which is a faster technology, but compatible with USB. And if you have Thunderbolt ports, this will run at the full performance because Thunderbolt supports that 10 gig USB speed. Now I've got the drive connected up to my Mac, and what I'm gonna do real quick is just copy over a 1.7 gigabyte video file that we can watch on a few other devices here. So we'll just drag it over, and you can see how fast that went. It didn't even uh, blink at it, and it's already on the hard drive. So that's a good sign that we've got a pretty quick connection here to the drive. Now what I'm gonna do real quick is run a speed test. This is the Blackmagic disk speed test, and this tests how fast it can write and read to the drive sequentially. And what I'm gonna do here is just select the Seagate drive from the list of available uh, disks here and click open. And I'm going to click start to begin that test. And as you can see here, it's writing at about 755 megabytes per second, which is pretty fast, but I've seen faster at this price point. And you can see here the reads are a little bit quicker. And I'm gonna let this test run for a few minutes just to see if it is able to maintain that speed. And if it is, we will move on and see some other benchmarks. All right, so I let it run for a few minutes. I also changed it to a different port to see if that impacted speed at all, but it was pretty much holding steady here at about 800 megabytes per second sequentially. And again, that's a very good rate of performance for a consumer SSD like this. But again, I did see slightly faster results on this test with other drives on this very same MacBook. Now earlier, I also ran the Crystal Disk Mark test on a Windows computer upstairs, and you can see that one did a little better. Now if you direct your attention to the right-hand column, you will see that its sequential write speed was a little faster on the Windows side, 871 megabytes per second, and its sequential read speed on the Windows machine came in at 975 megabytes per second. Where I think this drive really shines is in its random write performance. And if you look on the uh, scores below those two top ones, you'll see how well it does on random reads and writes. And it did well across the board, but it really shines again on the write side of things. And if you look here, compared to some of its peers in the marketplace, you'll see that it does much better for example, versus the Samsung T7 writing at 272.4 megabytes per second versus 143. And it also does well on some of the other tests that the Crystal Disk Mark throws at it for that random read and write performance. The random reads aren't bad either, as you can see here. So I think this drive will 
perform quite well in a number of different environments, including gaming, uh, loading up an operating system, anything where you're really pinging the drive randomly uh, for bits of data that you might want to read from it or write to it. So all in a nicely performing drive, even if it's sequential reads and writes are a little bit off versus some of its competitors. Now you can also plug it into things that are not computers. So I've got my iPad out here. This is the iPad mini that has the USB Type-C port. And most of the new iPads now will have one of these ports. And as you can see here, my Seagate drive is showing up and I can click on the video that we uploaded to the drive a little bit earlier, hey, nice and loud here. And you can see the video is playing just fine off of the solid state drive here. So no problem there. Now, one thing that I tried a little bit earlier was plugging it into my iPhone. iPhones have a lightning to USB adapter that you can use to connect external storage. Unfortunately, my iPhone said the drive was using too much power. So it didn't work with the iPhone, but it does work with the iPads that have USB Type-C connectors on board. And it will work with those natively, and it will appear in the Apple Files app, and you can move files back and forth to it with apps that are compatible with the Apple file system. Now things get a little more complicated on the Android side. The reason is, is that when you get the drive, it is formatted with a file system called XFAT. This works on the PC and the Mac, and it works on some Android phones, but not all. So for example, I've got a Galaxy S8 phone here from Samsung, and when I plug the drive in and load up the file app here, you can see that we are able to jump in and play back that video that we copied to it from the Mac a little bit earlier. No problem. But what happens when we take the drive out and plug it into a Google Pixel phone? Well, we're going to get an error message here. If I can turn off the assistant there. And it's going to tell me that it can't recognize the drive when I plug it in. Or in this case, nothing happens at all. If I pull down my notifications here, it says it's got an issue with the drive. And it's going to ask me to format it. The reason is, is that Google phones and some other Android devices are not paying for the XFAT license. So when you plug in an XFAT drive, it can't work. Now, if I formatted the drive, it would work fine. But if I had data on here and formatted it with this phone, it would erase all of that data. So for some Android phones, you might have to format the drive for FAT32, which is readable, whereas XFAT is not. Now Seagate though has a solution to this problem with an app that they have in the Google Play Store. It is called Seagate SSD Touch. And this will only work with their drives. And if I connect the drive now and open up their app, see it's already prompted me to do that. Uh, what'll happen now is that I can read the file system and move files back and forth, even though this is formatted for XFAT. So it's gonna take a second here for it to get itself initialized here initially. Uh, but after that, as you'll see here, I have to agree to all these terms and conditions, uh, and I'm going to skip this, and then I can skip that, <laughs> and then get started. It also wants to know my location for some reason, so there's some privacy issues here related to this app, and I'm not crazy about the fact that I have to give away my location or be asked to just to access files on my drive. Uh, but again, if I had formatted this for FAT32, I wouldn't need this app at all. However, once I go through all of that, you can see now that, oh, I got to set up permission here <laughs> to allow it to access the files. Now that I've done all of that, uh, you can see now that we have access to the drive. I can write things to it through this app. I can send files to it uh, from other apps if I need to. And then, of course, I can play back the video file here that we added uh, to the drive on the Mac a little bit earlier. Now, this XFAT problem is not unique to Seagate. As these drives get bigger, uh, these are the types of file systems that these drives want to use. But my advice would be, if you have an Android phone, plug it in first and see if it gets recognized. You don't need the app if it does get recognized. But if your phone doesn't support XFAT and you want to leave the native format of the drive intact, you will need to use the app or format it for FAT32. Now the app does add a few useful utilities to your Android phone. So for example, you can have it make a backup whenever it is plugged in. There's also a file syncing feature which might be useful for keeping your photo library backed up, for example. So there are some things that are of use if you do use the app. But again, if your phone recognizes the drive when you plug it in or you format it for a file system that the phone can recognize, the app is not necessary. Now you can plug this into game consoles. It'll work with Xbox and PlayStation consoles. The Nintendo Switch does not currently support USB storage at the time I'm recording this video, but if it supports it in the future, it will work with those. 
Now there is though a caveat when it comes to the next generation consoles, namely the Xbox Series S, the Series X, and the PlayStation 5. Next generation titles for those next generation consoles do not work on USB storage. You can store the games on them, but you can't play the games from them. So what a lot of people have been doing is moving their older PlayStation 4 and Xbox One games over to faster USB storage like this. Those older games will play, and that makes more room on the internal hard drive for the next generation titles. So these things are still useful on next gen consoles, but you can only play the older generation games on it. Nothing is simple these days, unfortunately. So overall, I found this to be a very solid offering from Seagate that's comparable to its competitors. I was very pleased with the random read and write performance. It definitely edged out a few of the other drives we've looked at over the last couple of months in that area. And that will make this one a good choice for booting up different operating systems, for running games, and all sorts of other activities that rely more on random reads and writes back and forth to the drive. The sequential speeds were slightly slower than some other drives we've tested, but not significantly so. So all in, it's a solid offering from Seagate, and if you are finding a good price on this one, you really can't go wrong with it, and it's very simple to get up and running on most computers. That is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.